question is the group has been noted, and I call the member for Hinkler. Well, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's a great pleasure to follow the new member for Wentworth, and we might have to hand out some practical lessons. Uh, I would say to the member for Wentworth, I'm an industrial electrician by trade. Uh, I'm a power systems engineer by profession. I was a registered professional engineer in Queensland. Uh, and whilst I acknowledge her passion and her, her deep-seated interest in renewables, we actually have to do things that work. So there are some real challenges around what's been proposed by the member for Wentworth, and I'd suggest that the very first one, the very first one is around reliability. Uh, the concept that we can shift the nation's energy from Tasmania to Townsville through a transmission line is fraught with danger. I mean, what happens when a lightning strike hits someone in Victoria and you black out the rest of the eastern coast? I mean, these things are just not engineering, feasible from an engineering viewpoint. Uh, in fact, the suggestion from AEMO recently in the report last year uh, would require over 100,000 acres of solar panels and you would need wind turbines from Sydney to Cairns at every 500 metres and you still wouldn't have enough. Uh, I mean, the people of North Queensland can tell you, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, in the last three weeks, I'd suggest there's not a single solar panel that delivered a single megawatt for three weeks. So we need to look at these things uh, in a practical and balanced sense. Now, for the member for Wentworth and the people in her electorate, I'm sure for them their ideology is one which they can afford. Now, there are many people in this country who simply cannot. So the proposal that we spend billions of dollars on things that don't work, we'll go and look at South Australia right now. Uh, there is some $40 billion worth of subsidies, as suggested by the Department of Industry when the renewable energy target was implemented. Uh, we have spent billions, tens of billions, on renewables, on wind, on solar. And what was, what's been the result? Well, you have the highest electricity prices in the world in South Australia. You had blackouts in South Australia and Victoria over the Christmas break. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, you've heard me say this before and I'll say it again. As politicians, we should get out of the way and let engineers do their job. Uh, I know you're a, you're a bright man, Mr Deputy Speaker, but I wouldn't like you to design the bridge that I drive my car across with the kids in the back. Uh, and we should recognise the limitations of people in this place to do things around technical engineering design that takes, can I say, decades in their professions to get that level of skill. So enough with this nonsense. Right? We, we cannot run the country on something which turns off in the dark or when a cloud runs over or it decides it's not windy enough. I mean, Mr Deputy Speaker, would you like to go into your stove, have to look at the window to decide whether you can put the cake on or not? I mean, th this is the proposal. Uh, and the idea that we can have batteries, I mean, nothing has been costed for the proposals for the member for Wentworth. None of it. Uh, and quite simply, most batteries have a 10-year life. Uh, they are incredibly toxic. What are you going to do with them? Football fields of batteries, which still will not, will not provide the capacity that's required. We need to make practical, common-sense decisions that work, or we will lose industry. And our demand management, I'll put it in a more simple term, that's when you turn off customers. Now, customers are our people. Uh, the $1,000 seems great until you actually want your air conditioning running uh, or you want your stove on on Christmas Day, because that's, well, that's when it peaks. Uh, and consequently, well, you just get switched off. I mean, some of this stuff is just absolutely nonsensical. Uh, and no one has discussed distribution upgrades. I mean, if you want to run this country on solar panels from the roofs of houses, you need to upgrade the biggest network in the entire nation, and that is the distribution system the low voltage system which runs down every single street to provide every single house with a connection, you cannot pump five or 10 kilowatts from every house down that line and back up, the, back up the network. It just doesn't work that way. It's like trying to fill a dam with a garden hose. So no one has costed this properly. You need to have a, a, a quite simply a balanced look at what needs to be done to make it work. Coal has to be part of the equation because at the moment there are no other replacements. There are no other replacements. I mean, I'm a supporter of nuclear, but that is a 20-year proposition, 20 years. And that information comes from the Institution of Engineers. I'd suggest they know what they're doing. Uh, but back onto the issue of the day, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can you believe it that we've actually seen Stephen Conroy, a former Labor senator, uh, who recently, I mean, I, I wouldn't believe too much what Mr Conroy puts forward, uh, but he's come out and he's attacked Bill Shorten uh, and lashed Queensland Labor's last minute, minute attack on Adani's proposed coal mine. Well, once again, I mean, we're talking about a single company. The Galilee Basin has more than 40 approved licences, more than 40. It is tens of thousands of jobs. Now, the member for Wentworth's proposal is that there'll be this transition. Well, she should get out there and tell everybody that works in the resources industry that she wants to transition their 200,000 jobs out of the economy. This is 50 per cent plus of the nation's exports, more than $200 billion. Uh, and the suggestion that we can just go without that, 
I mean, that is just nonsensical. We need to have a practical solution to what we are doing. So for Mr Conroy to come out, he's a former leader of the Labor Party in the Senate, and what he said was it was time for the state government, the Queensland state Labor government, to show it is serious about supporting coal jobs in central and north Queensland. And can I say, here, 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 it is about time that someone recognises the contribution that resources makes to this country. And there are those who get up every single day, every day, Mr Deputy Speaker, they put on their high-vis clothes, they put on their steel cap boots, they put on their helmets, and they go to work and they contribute to this nation's GDP. And they do it every single day. And in the face of activists, I mean, these people who have come out now, the Queensland government, I mean, how many more hurdles and hoops could they put in front of this project? Every time they get through them and they think they're at the final, the final line, they're about to break the tape, Mr Deputy Speaker, they're about to run through at the end, well, they put up another hurdle. Now, the latest, I believe, is a, a black-throated finch well, the black-throated finch is now going to stop the opening of the Galilee Basin because the Queensland government needs another review and they need to go back to an organisation which has spent over $2 billion. And what are they trying to do with that money? Uh, provide jobs into central Queensland which are desperately needed. Now, this might seem like a pretty, pretty short and uh, practical assessment of the black-throated finch. I'm, I'm sure it's a very important bird, but, Mr Deputy Speaker, it can fly. I, I'm, I'm confident that it can move. Uh, and in fact, Adani is suggesting that they have some 33,000 hectares of land allocated as a reserve for this bird. 33,000. Now, you know, Queensland Labor government need to wake up to themselves. They are very clearly just trying to stop this project. They should stop doing it. If they don't want the project to proceed, go and tell the company that that is the case. Go and tell them that they don't want jobs in central Queensland, and there are tens of thousands, Mr Deputy Speaker, tens of thousands. I mean, in terms of people who are actually supporting this project, once again, Mr Deputy Speaker, can you imagine my shock uh, when I read last night that the CFMEU will demand Bill Shorten's candidates across Queensland pledge support for the coal mining industry? Now, who would have thought that the CFMEU would have to go to the Labor Party, who purport to be the representatives of workers in this country, and propose support for an industry which they have been involved in for decades, for absolute decades? I mean, this is just getting completely out of hand. I mean, what sort of topsy-turvy world are we living in now, Mr Deputy Speaker, where the Labor Party doesn't support working people uh, and we have the CFMEU supporting our proposition that we should build our economy and open the Carmichael mine? I mean, th things are just getting very, very strange. Uh, and I'd say, you know, admit to these warnings, warnings that five other coal projects totalling $30 billion of investment would be threatened if actors, activists succeed in thwarting Adani's project. $30 billion is not a small amount of money. Now, for an area that needs jobs, for an area that needs to increase its local GDP, to provide opportunities for the people who choose to live there, Mr Deputy Speaker, and if you choose to live in regional Australia, you should have exactly the same opportunities as everyone else. Now, it's not just the Galilee Basin that the Queensland Labor government is making a mess of. We know that they are making a mess of energy. We are making a mess of energy. I spoke to Shane Roberts. Shane owns Pacific Coffee in Bundaberg. He tells me that his top three costs for his business are now, are now wages, commercial rent and power. Now, this is not an organisation that has huge refrigeration or is running an energy intensive business. They are a coffee shop. Uh, and he's actually had to invest nearly 40,000 to change his air conditioning over to try and bring down that monthly bill because it is out of hand. We look at Bundaberg Walkers, a foundry which has been in place for more than 130 years. Enio Triani, the manager there, told us in recent weeks that their contract expires on the 30th of June for the supply of energy through the Queensland Labor government, through their GOCs, and it will go from $1 million to $1.7 million a year overnight. Now, this is a business that employs 100 people that has trained apprentices and trainees throughout our region for decades, and they are in serious trouble if that is the case because their bottom line, I would suggest, may not even be that high. So once again, I say to the Queensland Labor government, get out and actually do something. You own the GOCs. You own all of the poles and wires. You own 70 per cent of the generators. <clears throat> you control the only retailer in town. In fact, it was suggested to me by Mr Triani that their per kilowatt hour rate will go from what it is currently to 48 cents a kilowatt hour. 48 cents. Right, well, domestic tariffs are around 29 to 30 now. There is no business that can absorb that increase in their overheads. Now, this is the nonsense of the argument put forward by people like the member for Wentworth. It wasn't that long ago, Mr Deputy Speaker, where these prices were down at 20 and commercial was under 10. 
Uh, and what's changed? Well, we have all these incredibly unreliable intermittent wind and solar generators right around the country that simply don't work all of the time. We need to make practical decisions that continue to deliver jobs, jobs for our people and jobs into the region. Thank you, Mr Speaker.